Hello everybody, I am 13 and after a couple of weeks on the jank train, I'm pretty excited because tonight we're going to be playing with some real power. So uh, this is Mardu Pyromancer, it's a pretty established deck, we're basically just running a powerhouse of great cards, um, everything here is playable, Mardu's kind of always been on the edge of the format or in the back of people's minds of like, why wasn't this ever playable? And uh, it's because there wasn't really a coherent thought, but there's a lot of really powerful cards. Marty Pyromancer has kind of had a season of being the new hotness, but it didn't really stick. Uh, one of the top grinders on MTGO runs Marty Pyromancer, and he has a ton of success with it. But yeah, so we're going to be playing this tonight. And why are we going to be playing this? Because Modern Horizons has brought us Cabal Therapist. So um, it's probably worth noting that this is not Cabal Therapy. But hopefully going to get some fun jankiness out of it. So I just put Cabal Therapy up in chat for you guys. Uh, it's basically a duress that you have to call the name. Sorry, a thought sees that you have to call the name. But it has flashbacks. So typically what you try to do is Young Pyromancer, Cabal Therapy, name a card that you're pretty certain is in their deck, just a four of, or something that can beat you. Get a Young Pyromancer token, then sacrifice the token. Call something that's actually in their hand after you've seen it sacrificing the token that you got for the first cast and then you end up getting another token but you've discarded hopefully multiples of cards in their hand so cabal therapist is going to be a little bit more of a grindy attrition base so this is probably going to play a little bit more like jund but uh yeah this is going to be ready on the back of that synergy hopefully then we have the typical marty pyromancer list with bedlam reveler so after we fill our graveyard we can just cast a bedlam reveler restock have a resilient threat then, uh, sorry, I changed my config and it's a little hard to stay on top of. We're doing this on the back of very powerful cards like Inquisition, Bolt, and Faithless Looting. And then uh, we are also running another card from Modern Horizons, Season Pyromancer. So at the right board state, can generate us some tokens, draw us two cards. Uh, at worst, it's still a 2-2 body that can get stuff back. We get Colgon's Command, Liliana, Last Hope, just a lot of really powerful magic cards, and uh, that's what we're going to be trying to do tonight. So, I have a ton of fun with Jank, I love playing with Jank, but I've been playing some really terrible decks lately, and I would absolutely love to crush with this. And like right off the bat, this is a painless Inquisition, Young Pyromancer, buy back Young Pyromancer when it dies. Bedlam Reveler's never great in your opening hand, but I just have everything I want here. This was a uh, Lingering Souls or Cabal Therapist, I'd be super happy. All right, and it looks like we're up against Storm right off the bat. So hopefully this Inquisition will go the distance. Another Bedlam Reveler. Not the best. When we cast one, we're going to discard the other one. Show me what you got. Alright, 100% Storm. So, next turn's going to be a creature. Hopefully we draw into some removal. Uh, I don't want them to get both creatures out, but... Yeah, I'm probably just going to take the Brawl and hopefully they'll just run out of Electromancer, not be able to combo for a turn, and then I can K Command. I think that's my best line. The other call here would probably be Serum Visions, just make it so that they can't set up their hand, but seeing as it doesn't go anywhere at the moment, I think the Brawl not being answerable unless I draw a Bolt is probably the best thing to take out. I could see a million reasons to take just about anything else there, but... They also didn't have the red source for the Electromancer yet, so I, I don't know. I, I'm sure somebody's going to correct me and be like, that was a horrible discard, but that's all that they get to do. That's all that they get to do. All right, so they did find another Serum Visions. But that's about it so far. Oh, look at that. We're drawing our basics like a champ. Not like our life total matters here, but... Young Peze gets to come down. 
And then if they get a red source, that means that they're probably going to drop the Electromancer. It's possible that they Pyretic Ritual and then Electromancer. All right, well, they're still looking for red. Put a card to the bottom. Ooh, they didn't get any lands there. All right, so I'm eventually going to have to find a, another red source for this Bedlam Reveler and another white source. And we do have a last hope, which means I need another black source. So I'm not actually going to run out my basic here. I'm going to leave up the opportunity to K command as well as getting my double red tapped if they don't do anything I care about. Uh, opponent just sent me oof. I do feel like Storm is on the harder end of decks to interact with. It's kind of like Tron, where it will be deterministic, and you have to have like a real clock in order to interact with them. So, kind of don't mind seeing them with them and Tron. Well, they found red. Okay, this looks like it's going to be a Gifts. Um, as much as I want to use this K command to try to kill something of theirs, I believe I have to put a clock on K command, make them discard, because they're going to be discarding a real card as well as dealing two damage and getting another Pyromancer token seems relevant. Plus, odds are they just remand me here. Or alternatively, they are going for a repeal and trying to drag out the game. That doesn't seem right, though. All right, they had an empty the warrens. Ooh, I like lingering souls. So on the off chance that they do want to repeal here, I'm actually going to repeal main phase. Oh, I misplayed that. I should have actually gotten a source that I wasn't going to have to shock into play for a white. So, I need my... I just need any white, so may as well go for Sacred Foundry. Red's more prevalent in our deck. So, in case they were planning on repealing the Young Pyromancer in order to try to save some life here, this is just going to do it for the additional token. Yep, as expected. We still get our token though, so correctly called that line. That did slow us down pretty significantly. This Bedlam Reveler is currently costing three less, so it's going to cost five to cast. So next turn's probably just going to be Young Peasy with the flashback Lingering Souls and then set up for a Bedlam Reveler. Basically need to draw into a lot of burn, though. All right, slow red source is good here. A lot of young pyromancer lists run both push and bolt. So I did actually represent the most I could here. But opponent now knows that we have nothing. Ooh, does that change things? Probably not. Uh, casting both young pyromancers here means that I'll still have a lingering souls in the yard to reduce the cost of one of the bedlam revelers. A couple of young pyromancer lists also run forked bolt, which is why opponent didn't block. They're going to try to untap and kill me. But pretty creature heavy hand here. Uh, actually, what's the math? So if I run out another young peasy, the tokens will have summoning sickness. If I flash back the lingering souls, I can attack for eight, which means a bolt is lethal off the top. Yeah. 
This is the best thing I can do. And I suppose we'll see if we're dead. Opponent got another slow land. Like, it's just so hard. I had multiple things to do. I was constantly running out tokens, and I just can't race the storm deck because it's so hard to interact with. If one of these were a bolt, I could slow it down a little bit, but I've been killed on turn three without a mana dork before. Like, I have to get my Kimball out of the board or something along the lines of Thalia or Trenosphere. Otherwise, there's just no dealing with this. Right, an opponent is over there trying to figure out if they can actually go off. Uh, actually, let's just shield until here. I was going to F6, but let's see if they actually want to do something. Looks like they're waiting. All right, well, that's that's a card. I don't really think it helps me. I can't Bedlam Reveler anymore. Not like it would matter because I wouldn't have enough damage. So I'm going to get through for seven here. Actually, probably just six. So two less, so it's going to cost six. I have five. I should put opponent at four, three. Yep, I really wish I had drawn a bolt. But what can you do? Cabal Therapist is going to make them hopefully commit into something that's going to be an instep gifts ungiven. And then they'll just untap and kill me. But gots to run it out. See if they can get there. Uh, it could have been possible that I should have just young peasy if I got the extra turn. But I was pretty positive I wasn't getting an additional turn here. I just... Opponent's three cards here must not mean a whole lot. Hopefully they're going for the empty the wardens. No, they can't. Otherwise they die to the spirits in the air. So this is probably the standard package with Past in Flames, Scrape Shot, Ritual, Ritual. If they don't actually commit for it next turn, I can Cabal Therapist something that I actually give them with Gifts Ungiven. Okay, so this is making me think that they actually have Grape Shot in hand. So bend the Manamorphosis it draws a card, bend the Splice into Arcane Ritual because they can get more mana off of that. Pass in Flames is going to cost more with Flashback, but really don't think it matters. Opponent's untapping with five mana and a mana dork. And they've got a no on nothing, so just F6, sit back. I said F6, but you do you. Grape shot to get into the yard. Yep, we're dead. I'm not going to make them click through it. Uh, what's going to happen here is they're going to cast a Grape Shot and then the Pass in Flames just hit all the rituals and then Grape Shot me again. All right. So Kemball 100% comes in. Leyland of the Void comes in. This is going to make it as they're storming off. We get to drain some life. This makes it so that they can't go for their graveyard. Most of the time they can do pieces of the puzzle and stuff to get around graveyard hate, but still got to go for it. Uh, K Command is bad. Cabal Therapist is actually oddly relevant. The Lingering Souls actually lose a decent amount of value here just because it's not castable until turn three. 
I really want to give Seasoned Pyromancer a shot. We can also discard our Ley Lines with it, so that feels relevant. Dreadbore's awful. These can still hit face slash their mana dorks, so I think that's about all we can do. K Command being able to kill an Electromancer is mildly interesting. Being able to pick up Bedlam Reveler is part of our strategy. I actually guess I'd rather have a K Command over uh, Last Hope, just because this doesn't kill anything but a Gabo token. Yeah, that's awkward. Opponent missed mana. Hey, Seraphix. Between Storm and Tron, I can't ever seem to get a matchup that's that allows me to play a control game. But hopefully Kimball will go the distance. Most of the time they bring in one lightning bolt. Alright, so this is a Faithless Looting and Lightning Helixes to kill the Dorks. I mean, it's fine. This Faithless Looting will help sculpt our hand and a lot of the cards we care about. Work in the Graveyard as well. Like all of those cards. So I'm just going to bend one of the Helixes and... A land, that means I get an untap Cabal Therapist. Yeah, that seems right. This puts me a turn off, but doesn't really matter. Would have also liked to have seen Little Peasy before Big Peasy. That's interesting. All right, and that's a that's a wee little peasy. So uh, what I'm going to do here is actually cast little peasy. Set an upkeep stop. No, that doesn't work. Yeah, I need to get a clock out there. All right, little man, do your job. Apply pressure. Make dorks. Oh, for a second I thought I was getting spell snared. After last night when Arclight Phoenix spell pierced me twice main board, I was just, I, I honestly don't know what to expect anymore. Man a dork. Man a dork. Yay! So, Therapist with Helix looks delicious here. Um, I need to get double red for the Season Pyromancer, so unfortunately this is going to be a... Blood Crypt? Yeah, Blood Crypt covers the most colors. Don't like losing this much life. It makes the job so easy for the opponent. Oh well, Helix gains some back. Also makes me a dork. Make my therapist. So, names here. I'm expecting Gifts Ungiven to be the first card on my opponent's mind. Uh, if they untap and jam a Mana Dork and just combo off, I'll be super sad, but them's the beats. I've got to get my engine running. This means that I can discard them back to back, which is exactly what I want to do with this deck. Significantly better to start than last time, drawing two Bedlam Revelers right off the top. I do need to set an upkeep stop, though, because it's possible I want to bolt during my upkeep if they run out of mana dork, and then I can sack the non-summoning sick one, or the summoning sick one. Words are hard, okay? Don't go for it. Yay! Now we get to do what we do. Land off the top would just be gravy.
Uh, look at that. Uh, I guess I would have had the yield from that. Oh, well. So I'm going to sack the summoning sick one. Target opponent. And gifts ungiven probably accomplishes the most here. Oh, I actually can't cast a Seasoned Pyromancer with this mana base. That's unfortunate. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that's a thing. Hit Gifts Ungiven. And then next turn, I'm going to slam three Desperate Rituals. Jeez, I don't even know what opponent can do next turn that matters. I guess they could top deck a Empty the Warrens. All right, that's the opt. Like, honestly, at this state, if they top deck a Grape Shot, they probably have to just Desperate Ritual and clear my board. All right, one is a land, one is unknown. Don't tell me you got it. Did they really draw a payoff? They looked at three cards. Okay, uh, now I'm not incentivized to sack a token, so that seems odd. Unless this is a main two grape shot for the tilt. Uh, I don't believe I'm sacking here. I could name... It's probably just a lander. They would have ran it out. No, I actually do want to do this first. If for some reason they have interaction, drawing two cards off Season Pyromancer could potentially set me up with a bolt or a push or an inquisition or something. Oh, like that is beautiful. Who doesn't love seeing that? Pitch a late game ley line, get a K command. So I'm trying to figure out if there's anything I actually want to accomplish here. So I can actually, in my upkeep K command, make them discard a card, deal two damage. But I don't think that's really valuable right now. The primary thing I want to do is just be able to swing in and potentially just finish them off with the K, K command. Generating the token for the therapist doesn't really do anything. I probably should have held that last land for the faithless looting in the bend. Okay. Looking for a bolt. If they would have opted during their main phase, they could have actually hit a grape shot. Yeah, so if they just top deck a grape shot here, that means that my Cabal Therapist, my Young PZ, and an Elemental Token would have been gone. Moto 
was lagging a bit today. So we done here? All right. Uh, I don't think there's anything I want to change. Really don't think the K command actually showed much value there. It was a finishing move, but I had bolts and helixes and all kinds of things. Uh, we don't really have anything like the Dread of Winter for board clears. We don't get Golgari Charm. I guess I could have Zealous Persecution in the side. That probably was worth a consideration. But we're pretty tight in our bad matchups. Uh, Seraphix, what's the logic there? So I'm kind of thinking that the K Command can pick up a Reveler. But the Destroying Artifact doesn't really have text. The Return of Creature only has text in the late game where it probably doesn't matter. I guess it could rebuy Kemball if they actually go gifts for their Lightning Bolt. This feels like a clock, but you've been right just about every time you've ever recommended something. So I, I'll, I'll trust your instincts. A two mana three four that can end the game feels like it'd be relevant. Although if opponent only has one card left in hand and they've been ritualing, I can make them discard it with the ritual on the stack. So that's cute. I, I might see that coming up. All right, so this is an Inquisition, Bolt the follow-up. Definitely fill the yard for this Bedlam Reveler. Yeah, you've got a point. Uh, this hand actually does fuel the Reveler, and I'm on the draw, which means I get an opportunity to draw a land. Then I get my turn two opportunity to draw a land into a Faithless Looting. We'll still be able to kill their Mana Dork on two, so I think this hand works. All right. Opponent's starting off can tripping. Uh, I am running 21 lands in this deck. Most of these lists end up running 20. So, and, like, honestly, with four draws, I should be able to find one. Plus, discarding Lingering Souls is just advantage. Bedlam Reveler, any of these spells will benefit my end game plan. Uh, I don't need that stop no more. All right, well, second looting is a second looting. Opponent, I want your best card. Wow, that is a mediocre hand. Uh, they did one to the top and one to the bottom with the Serum Vision, so hopefully they have a good card coming. At least from their perspective. I do want this to be a decent game. All right, they found another Serum Visions. One to the top, one to the bottom. And not a land. So Faithless Looting, if I don't see a land here, there are gonna be problems. Uh, oddly enough, I don't think I need the Helix, and I definitely don't have the mana for it right now, so I think I'm just going to bend that. And then I'm probably just going to jam the other Faithful Saluting. I just want to fuel the Graveyard and get this Bedlam Reveler out as soon as I can where it's beneficial. Because by the time I cast this Faithful Saluting, if I bend two spells, then Bedlam Reveler just costs two. Yeah, so like... Oh... I'm not bidding any spells here. But this means that next turn I get a young Pyromancer and kill a Mana Dork if they have one. Bedlam Reveler is currently costing two, three, four, five less. So it's still just three mana, which means that next turn's PZ kill a Dork followed by Bedlam Reveler restock. And I'm actually probably going to get a basic planes if I don't have to cast a lightning bolt. 
So that aired mace is perfectly acceptable. Peer through the depths. All right. So they're going to go get an instant or sorcery spell. Found a mana morphos. They did play their Shivan Reef. And I believe their Spire Bluff. They start off with on turn one. Played a blood crypt. Okay, yeah, they start on the snow covered island, so that's the one that we knew about. Their mana dorks just enable so much. There's probably an argument to just bolt their face and get the elemental to increase the clock, but I don't think it's time for that yet. Uh, especially not with the Therapist. I'm not discarding the Therapist and the Bolt for the Bedlam Reveler. Alright, Therapist, come do work. I've liked you every time I've cast you so far. And oddly enough, you don't get flipped by Thing in the Ice. That's a... Weird interaction. I wonder if opponent knows that we know about two rituals in their hand. They might just go for a gimpy empty the warns here. There's Electroman. Bolt that dude. So they can still cast the other ritual in their hand with the Electromancer out. That'll leave them with six mana, but... Eh, that might have been a mistake. That just adds to the storm count. It looked like they were trying to go off, so I just fueled it. I mean, if they have a Mana Dork out, I kind of got to go for it. So they only have two cards in hand, one of which is a Mana Morphos, which means they had to have found a payoff, or this is a blind go for it, because they knew that I was going to be discarding their two Rituals. Okay, well, they didn't cast the Mana Morphos. There it is. So that Metamorphos costs one more than it needed to, which means they probably have the payoff in hand. They drew into another Mana Dork. Oh, okay, so Blind Metamorphos. No payoff, no payoff. Oh, well, they're trying. So they put it to the bottom. All right. Well, sometimes you just don't get there. Yeah, now I get a Bedlam Reveler, restock. I have plenty of fuel in the graveyard, including a seasoned Pyromancer, a Faithful Salute, and a Lingering Souls. I uh, probably want a second white source. I don't really think it matters. I don't have a lot of white. Nah, opponent just messaged me big whiff. Uh, I don't see any reason to sack a token here. There's the Bedlam dude, two mana, just delicious. Draw three cards. It's so nice playing a good deck for once. Another peasy. I'm not even going to give them the opportunity to have an option here. Bye bye, little dude. And 
and now we have some action. Uh, this ley line's not going to do anything. I'm looking at it immediately right now with the Faithless looting in mind. Flashing back the Seasoned Pyromancer and just getting two more tokens also seems acceptable, but I have opponent very close to dead. Like, it might even just be the prowess trigger from this that can do it. So I'm at 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Ah, oh, they're just dead on board. If I need to, I can Faithless looting and look for a bolt. Nope, they're done. Well, pretty solid showing versus Storm so far. Typically, if you can keep their hand under control, you can usually do all right. Yeah, I, I, I never feel bad for beating Storm or Tron. Despite the fact I made a Storm Tron deck, yes, that happened. And it was an abomination. Ooh, no turn one play, plenty of mana. K command to buy back the first PZ that dies. I'm on the draw with multiple, multiple one drops. So I have 16 one drops to draw into. Yeah, I'm going to have to keep this. It's a very slow start for this deck, and it doesn't have discard on turn one, but I'm keeping. All right, looks like we're getting discarded. Oh, no, 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 it's Hogak. Uh, concede and go to the next game. Uh, well, it's not like I have much against this pre-board anyway. I'm not running incidental relics or anything like that. I do have K Command to blow up the altar, but I'm on the draw. Oh, Shriekhorn? So this is a dredge hybrid. Found a grave crawler. Alright, well them beats aren't so bad so far. I think I'm just on Pyromancer to get out a couple of blockers for myself. And then I'll have K Command if they find an altar. Uh, Bedlam Reveler isn't terrible. Well, with all the blood gas and grave crawlers, as long as they don't go on the mill plan, I actually might be able to chump block for a while. Ah, they found a Vengevine. It's going downhill. They did cast their grave crawler already, which means they need to have. Uh, that was a Stitcher Supplier trigger, so that wasn't them discarding. They might have another one in hand, but... Oh, it looks like Vengevine isn't coming back. Oh yeah, they got Hogok. Uh, how do I deal with an 8-8 in this list? I have Dreadbore to draw into. But then they'll just recast it. Uh, K Command doesn't do anything at this point. Collective Brutality Draining feels kind of relevant. I don't actually want to kill the Gravecrawler yet. Why do you have Trample, sir? Why do you have Trample? You are free! So... Collective Brutality, I, this Bedlam Reveler is not doing anything, so it's a free escalation. I don't actually think killing any of the zombies here are beneficial. I'd have to kill both, otherwise I can just recast this one, and that's just going to dredge them into more things that could potentially bring back Vengevine. Uh, I can run out Young Pyromancer, expect to take 11 here. Then I can make two tokens every time I cast something, but I'm still only drawing live to Dreadbore. I guess I'll actually be live to Faithless Saluting Dreadbore. Draining for two should put me in at least enough range that I'll survive for two more turns to try to get that out. K Command isn't really going to do anything as far as picking up creatures. Uh, Alright, well, I think my best line here is Young Pyromancer drawn to Dreadbore. I'm very far behind, but this deck just does explosive things, so I need to play to my best out, which is finding a Dreadbore. Like, Lingering Souls doesn't even come close to getting me there. Last Hope doesn't really get me there. 
This is just post board, go to ley lines. You Shriek Horn away, you found another Venge Vine, you have five cards in hand, down to four. Apparently don't have multiple creatures to cast, which is nice. Hey! Look at me! So... I need to just get a basic here. I kind of don't care about white yet, although I can use white to cast Collective Brutality. What do I have that's white that I'd actually care about? Lingering Souls, maybe a Helix? Helix might actually buy me another turn, so I'm going to go ahead and get the white. Uh, then we get to free swing in for four. This is going to be collective brutality. I think I'm going for... I really don't want to kill the grave crawler yet. Yeah, let's just do two modes. We're going to drain and duress. I don't think there's anything to hit for Duress, but this Bedlam Reveler is not doing anything for me, so I may as well get rid of it. Wow! <laughs> Alright, uh, so that's a thing. Oh, that was a mistake. Seeing as how they can't cast anything in hand, I was actually supposed to kill one of these, so then they couldn't convoke for two. Alright, yeah, that was a punt. But I'll just go ahead and dread bore. This buys me another turn, as well as getting me multiple blockers. That just... Barely gave them enough to dredge, yeah. Mistakes were made across the board. I didn't want to give them the Gravecrawler, though, because the Gravecrawler would have meant that they would have had a free cast from the graveyard to try to get two creature spells to get these Venge Vines back. Yep, just recasting the Hogok. I have another Dreadboard to draw into. That is a Lily Last Hope. Really don't think that does anything. So I'm only reducing the cost of this Bedlam Reveler by two, so it still costs six. This Lily Last Hope can shrink the Hogok. It can also just kill the Grave Crawler. Uh, I can K Command. That doesn't really do anything super beneficial. Um, I can actually K Command get six Dorks throw a young. P Sorry, six elementals in combined. Throw all six elementals and a young pyromancer in front of Hogok and kill it. And kill the grave crawler. I'll take one point of damage. Lose a young peasy. Alternatively, I just Lily Mill. Hopefully pick up a decent creature. Yeah, I think Lily Mill is my best out. Because it's going to fill the graveyard, so I get a chance to Bedlam Reveler. Uh, sure. Young PZ's fine. Hogak's going to get some free damage in. What if I just kill Hogok here with my two PZs? Lily lives. I can kill the Grave Crawler. They can't recast anything. Yep. Board, you are making a noble sacrifice here. You won't be able to recast Hogok unless he draws something amazing. Another grave crawler's fine. Arid Mesa. So kill a grave crawler. 
He has a Vengevine and three bridges still in hand, so Gravecrawlers can die at this point. Casting both of them won't accomplish anything beneficial. Seasoned Pyromancer can discard a land and K command, hopefully draw me into another Dreadbore. Alternatively, just flashback Lingering Souls right now. Bedlam Reveler is costing three less. Wow, that's painful. So I could just Bedlam Reveler have a blocker. Did I lose everything in hand? This seems fine. I'm going to get two chump blockers for a turn. Lily can pick up the Bedlam Reveler, assuming that they don't attack her, which they shouldn't. Uh, Faithless Looting is just going to redraw, as well as fuel for the future Bedlam Reveler. Wow, those are some horrible cards. Just absolutely horrible. Not blocking the Stitcher Supplier. That's just going to fuel the graveyard for them to recast Hogok. Oh, uh, that's not good. Bridge from below is coming in. Yep, two bridges. And Carrion Feeder means that they have a sack outlet now. Okay, they might have just taken it there. There's not much coming back from that point. I suppose it's possible they commit too hard and I Lily grab a Bedlam Reveler and draw into a couple of bolts. It's going at me. Do I care? I don't want to block and give them multiple zombie tokens. Versus... Yeah, I don't think I care. I guess if I blocked, they would have just sacked it to the carrion feeder. All right, I have an out. Let's pick up Bedlam Reveler, draw three bolts. Yep, you do you, opponent. In fact, I just want F6. Uh, I need red and probably white for Helix. Doing that post-combat means I couldn't get back their Vengevine by recasting the Gravecrawler over and over again, so not a huge fan of that sequencing, but this is a new deck and it's pretty complicated. Looking back, that season Pyromancer play was probably a mistake. If I would have actually just held the Bedlam Reveler, then well, I probably would have been attacked by more creatures, so. It's hard to make an actual judgment call on that. Yep, you get your creatures back. I'm planning on burning your face if I win. You attacking would have been lethal. Sacred Foundry. All right. I would like Bedlam Reveler. Um, yeah, let's just try this. I guess I actually can't get there. I won't have enough mana. Uh, Dreadbore doesn't really do it. Colgon's Command can kill. I just don't have enough blockers. I I would have needed Pyromancer, regular Pyromancer. Uh, alternatively, Faithless Looting, Flashback Lingering Souls. Ugh. Yeah, I don't think I'm getting there. Uh, so opponent knows about the K command. They don't really, no, they know about Dreadbore. And the honorable way out. 
Okay. Gonna do better when we actually have graveyard hate. 100% coming in. Pithy Needle's coming in. Uh, Pithy Needle is there for Altar of Dementia. That's their primary engine and pretty much the best way we're going to lose. Inquisition kind of actively helps them to a point. Cabal Therapist needs to stick on the battlefield is mildly awkward. Uh, Brutality is going to whiff more often than it's going to hit. This can still kill one of our creatures, but eh. Cabal Therapist sacking one of our creatures to get rid of Bridge is mildly relevant, despite the fact it wasn't our primary game plan. Um, Lily Last Hope is kind of bad. I mean, it can kill our own creatures, but if that's our game plan, I just don't want to be doing that game plan. Lingering Souls can't block Hogok, but it can block a lot of other things. Plus, it's just so much value. Uh, this feels pretty bad, though. We need to be on the ley line and still get a decent clock out. Dreadboar is one of our few answers for Hogok. Seasoned Pyromancer can be card advantage. Bolt seems mediocre. I don't know. I am playing one too many lands for this match. Uh, I'll trim on one just to make sure that we actually have a shot of casting something relevant. Um, maybe just the Inquisitions. I just feel like this doesn't matter a whole lot. We can discard like a Grave Crawler or a Hogok. Well, not Hogok with that, but just discard something that... I guess that could grab Altar. Maybe on the play we were supposed to keep that. All right, well, I guess we get to see exactly how good that is. Uh, this is a... No, I need Leyline. We're not going to win this matchup without Leyline. Well, I guess we get to see how good that is. A little bit of interaction. We don't have a really good clock. With Inquisition, I think this is less relevant. I need to find a Pyromancer or something along those lines. It's getting me a Blood Crypt pretty easily. And I want to see what you got, dude. How do they always have the Neonate start? I guess they didn't have it last game, but that's still pretty rough. All right, so Sack Outlet, something that's going to try to hit the yard anyway. Bridge from below. Huh. So as their graveyard doesn't matter with the Ley Line out, I think I might be taking the Bridge from below. Lightning Helix can clean up any of the creatures. Yeah, let's just take the bridge. This is a pretty slow, mediocre hand. And they drew a Blood Crypt. So, feeder. I don't like them having a sack outlet despite the fact they don't have a graveyard, so 100% helixing this. And the more cards that hit the yard, when there is no yard, the better. Alright, there's the basic swamp, which means blood ghast. Oh, neonate. Okay, so I'm leading on the Faithless Looting off the White Source. Wow. Just wow. <laughs> so, I even trimmed a land. <sighs> Boy. So, one, two, three, four cards reducing the cost. Yeah, I mean, I can't get rid of the Bedlam Reveler. That's going to be how I come back into this. So if I get a land, just flashback Faithless Looting. Hopefully discard two instants or sorceries. Oh, that's lovely. So what do I still know about? Just the Fatal Push and the Blood Ghast? <laughs> okay. Yep. 
Oh, I guess they're not getting the Vengevine back? I thought they cast two creatures. Yeah, I don't know what to make of that. Uh, Godless Shrine. Yep, playing in my outs is flashing back this Faithless Looting and hopefully discarding two pieces of gas, so... Oh, this is actually going to take a Faithless Looting out of the yard. So I'm still probably a full turn away. <laughs> oh my gosh. Alright, might be moving on here. One, two, three. Yep, that just made our Bedlam Reveler cost more. Let's try that again. Yeah, I'm done. We're not coming back from this. So many lands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine of 20 in the top 19. Oh well. That deck is very powerful and we don't have any interaction aside from Ley Line, so yeah, it's perfectly acceptable within the realm of what we can expect Pyromancer to do. All right, so what we could do to sure up that matchup, probably just have like a little bit more graveyard hate. It, early builds of this when it was popular last time, Dredge had just made a resurgent and Nighthill Spellbomb was actually main deckable. Just because it cantripped, it kind of threw your opponent off, it did most of the stuff that you wanted to in this matchup. Uh, something like Graft Digger's, Graft Digger's Cage hurts this strategy, so does Relic, which is the other reason Nihil Spellbomb was main deckable. Uh, that's just hard, though. With the amount of Hogak running around, this probably wasn't the best deck choice, but eh, we put up a fight. Given the fact that we had nothing going for us game one, we put up a fight and made it a couple of turns in. All right, uh, this is, we're on the play. I love all these cards. I need one more land to be functional. All right, I'm gonna try to be disciplined and mulligan that. This is slightly better, although it's no turn one play. Do not need a third Pyromancer. Let's see what degenerate thing opponent's up to. Appears to be burn, the double collective brutality hand. Nope, big red. So chalice is gonna hurt. I need the blood crypt here. Ooh, I actually probably should have grabbed a swamp if this is big red. I could expect a blood moon in my future. Although we, this deck usually plays Blood Moon, so we might be okay. I still think a Swamp was the correct call, but we might be okay. One hundred percent telegraphing what we're doing at this point. A oh, Windswept. That's an odd inclusion. Oh, so this is just Ponza. Balakut. Valakut with main deck relic. Alright, well, I do actually want to draw another land here, and this will generate me a token. Such whiffage, such wow. Alright, well, I'm not going to want to discard my hand anytime soon, especially if I'm slow rolling and can't multi spell, so let's just take a look. I'm pretty sure this is Valakut at this point. Uh, yeah, I don't want the face, Faithless Looting. 
All right, so it's Valakut with not a whole lot going on. They're going to make their land drop. Uh, I'm taking the Farseek for now, just because they won't be able to do much with the Summoner's Pack, but Farseek's definitely going to get cast. I guess they could go get an Azusa. Uh, opponent's actually trying to chat. Land destruction. Seems about right. So it's a Ponza Valakut hybrid. And that's a thing. Okay. So opponent's got a summoner's pack for a Titan. Go get to Valakuts. Then I basically need to have Dreadbore and a land. Well, that's a land. So I can collect a Brutality, discard Young Pyromancer. Opponent's just going to attack with Prime Time and basically kill me. So I do technically have a shot here if they don't really have a follow-up and they attack. I do have to two mode this. Gonna drain and duress. Discard the young pyromancer because I won't be casting it anytime soon. This generates me a token. Get rid of the land destruction. Now, if they attack in, I get a swing back for five and drain for two. That's uh, not gonna be enough. But I can always top deck a bolt and that will be enough. Although any land drop just kills Young Pyromancer, so. Yep, smart opponent's gonna send three to Young Peasy and probably three to it. Okay, they're sending all of it to me, which means it's gonna be seven, I survive at one. See if they have a land drop. If not, top deck bolt should be lethal. Okay. They got it. All right. Against Valakut, Alpine Moon is going to make a splendid appearance where I name Valakut and they can't ping me anymore. Uh, Kimball is mildly interesting. Turns all their ramp spells into drain two. Also makes it so I'm not afraid to go below 18 for escape shift. Uh, opponent is also on the land destruction plan. Pithy Needle against normal Valica can name basically any of their fetch lands. Uh, Kalani Heart Expedition, Steve. I don't really think that's worth bringing in. We have multiple things that do things. So I think right now Alpine Moon and potentially Kimball. Like them summoners packing and getting drained for two could close out a game. Especially if they're on the land destruction plan. But three mana is asking a lot for the 21 land deck. So Cabal Therapist could be interesting, set up for a lot of attrition. Inquisition can still their ramp, especially on the play. We get, yeah, Lily's not very good, but I need to find room for the Alpine Moons before the Kembles. So, hmm. Probably just the Dreadbore. This can kill at prime time, but by the time that he's come down, He's already done his damage, so probably that spread. I really don't think Kemble's that good, but I'm just trying to make the best selections here, and Kemble can do some damage, especially on the play. They far seek once, then Kemble just drains. 
It also makes it so that the scape shift needs to be at like eight lands as opposed to six. All right, so this is Inquisition into Cabal Therapist and Looting. I mean, that's... Part of the reason Pyromancer hasn't done fantastically is because, like, every matchup is rough. I mean, you can try to sugarcoat it as much as possible, but Mardu's never been in a great position, and it's just the one guy that was on the leaderboards that could run it really well. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if the additional red source for the multiple red spells, or if I want the white for the lightning helix. I think I'm just on blood crypt here. But, no, wrong card. Yeah, whatever. I'm trying to say why I don't think Mardu's in a good position, and I click on the wrong Cabal card. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it just doesn't really feel that great. They even kept in their relics. I don't think that does a whole lot. I guess it keeps my Bedlam Revelers off. If we go to a game three, I'll probably trim a Bedlam Reveler for the other Kemball. I'm going to ask if this was a sideboard card. Uh, so I think I'm actually on Faithless Looting first, and then depending on what I find, I'm going to probably just Inquisition. Okay, uh, Bean Land Destruction. I actually think I'm going to bet a Helix. No, Helix will gain me my life back. Eh, this seems fine. And then I can Inquisition and see if I actually have to sack him, and then I can just buy him back. Although, seeing as how... Yeah, I need to get rid of the Blood State Mire. I have a white source. Okay, so Anger of the Gods, Farseek, Scapeshift. <laughs> Just lovely. All right, 100% Cabal, Therapisting, the Scapeshift. I think I want to take the Farseek. Keeping an opponent off their ramp seems like how I'm going to win. Anger kills, like, all my threats. Okay, now I just talked myself into Anger, because killing all of my threats are going to make it so that I can't do anything productive. Then, snagging two scape shifts, if they don't draw a lightning bolt, should be pretty good here. Oh, I should have hit the land. Not thinking through it very well. All right, well, you are definitely eating the big one. Let's sack you. Get rid of two scape shifts. I don't know, Seraphix. You play a lot of Legacy. Am I overvaluing the ability of... Being able to name something. So I know opponent has a stomping ground and a forest. I think I'm just going to do this now. Do I actually want to take the relic? Yeah, I think I'm going to try to put my opponent off a of land and destroy the relic. Just so that my future Bedlam Revelers are live. <laughs> yeah, opponent's like sitting here messaging me, I like Cabal with discard after I take two of escape shifts. <laughs> The Relic got rid of one of their redraws, as well as keeps our Bedlam Reveler alive, which is the main reason I went for that. Uh, I really don't care about either of these two cards in my hand at this point, so I'm going to get a couple of tokens and draw two new cards. Yeah, I, I love being able to chat with my opponents. Like, going to FNM was always just... Oh boy, that is brutal. I do want to land, but... Uh, 
at FNM, I just got really used to like sitting down across from my opponent. Like I got used to playing with my cards upside down. I like probing them, asking what their sideboard decisions were. Like that's my favorite part about actually going to FNM. Okay. I honestly think that they surgical me just so that they could see what my deck looked like. <laughs> Okay, um, without Faithless Looting, I could Cabal, or I could draw into Collective Brutality. I really don't think there's much benefit to that, so I'm just going to run that out tapped. So, I've... When I first started playing Magic, I played against a lot of people that had the foreign cards, and they always had to describe them, and I was in a EDH playgroup where one of my opponents like whipped out a deck that they had built like three years ago and they couldn't remember what some of the cipher cards did and it's just like if you need to like try to figure out what card you have in your own deck three years after you buy them i'm never buying foreign cards it's just that simple All right, so I do think Lingering Souls is showing some of its weakness here because, not Lingering Souls, he's in Pyromancer. If I would have had a Bedlam Reveler, I probably would have killed opponent by now. I would have drawn three fresh cards, but yeah. Not sure how I feel about that one. Uh, opponent being on Surgical, the Chem Ball's looking a little bit more interesting. Oh yeah, I wanted him for a Bedlam Reveler if they're on Relic. I should have realized that in game two. But like Brad one has a storm deck and I think it's mostly Russian at this point. He'd have to weigh in on it, but he, I know he has like all Russian brawls or something like that. And he's just like, I'll happily explain what brawl does. I'm like for two mana, a one, three, like you're going to be explaining that one a lot. Oh, this is a awkward hand that does nothing. I think I'm going to try to be disciplined and mulligan it. Because this is turn one Faithless Looting. I'm not really sure what I'm looking for other than an Alpine Moon. It's likely going to get Surgical to Relic. And then I have Young Pyromancer with only a K command, but nothing important to buy back. Okay, this looks a little bit more my speed. And that is a perfect threat to restock. Yeah, the card shop I go to is on the higher end for Magic. Um, they do streaming on Tuesdays for Legacy and all that stuff. So I just got pretty used to people wanting expensive cards. And I think the shops got used to it too. So they started bringing in a couple of cases anytime a new set comes out. And it was just, I never really cared. Like, I have a textless cryptic command in my like fully foiled expeditioned out. Wow, this is a bad hand from opponent but every time I'm about to cast cryptic command I have a huge tell and that's I reach into my pocket for my phone so I can show opponent what cryptic command does and so I never really appreciated the foils or not the foils the foreigns as much as I could ooh that is a cabal therapist so faith is looting first Uh, I'm expecting opponent to want to surgical that, so I'm actually just going to get rid of one of my fetch lands because I care about my life total and the other faithless looting. Then I'll go ahead and go grab a godless shrine. Run out the therapist. And we'll see if opponent wants to roast it. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Alright, 
they got a basic mountain. They drew a prismatic omen. All right, so my clock's got to get up there. And they're going to roast him. All right, respect was paid to the therapist. That is a seasoned pyromancer. All right, what is the current cost of Bedlam Reveler? It's one, two, three. So it costs six. That's a lingering souls. Alright, I don't know anything. Opponent's got two cards, and they can probably kill me with them. Uh, this is now costing four less, which means I can Bedlam Reveler. I'm fully on board for that. Uh, I'm going to try to do this before opponent can Surgical it, because they do have two cards in hand, and I don't know what they are. And Season Pyromancer in the bin doesn't really matter. Like I'll just exile it, get a couple of tokens. Wow. All right. Well, all the lands this game. How many of them? All of them. Valakut is online, which means Scape Shift for five is going to be lethal, especially if they have a land drop. Uh... Okay, so Valakut hit the Bedlam Reveler and then Anger. That was that was a pretty sweet play from opponent. Now my life total is getting a little low. Not sure how I come back from this one. Opponent does have no cards in hand though. So Collective Brutality, Drain, probably isn't that effective. I think I'm looking for an actual threat. Ball Therapist isn't going to get there. Discard the two lands. This is going to be Young Peasy, or Season Peasy. Get two fresh draws, put a little bit of damage on the table. Uh, that means that Valakut's going to kill Peasy. Oh, and I found another Brutality. That's rough. I need an Alpine Moon. That's really all I'm looking for at this point. So Steve can fog and then shoot me, or just shoot Peasy whenever they feel like it. Um, all right, I think I'm just on Faithless Looting looking for Alpine. Those are an alpine. So I'm likely not going to be draining with this collective brutality. Inquisition is dead. This at least lets me peasy, and then an alpine is kind of live. I want to cast peasy after combat in case I try to fog with Sakura Tri Builder. I do think peasy can actually go the distance here. If they just whiff for a couple of draws, then. Yeah, 100% expecting that. That's a mountain. Go into the face. Oh my gosh, I am struggling. Struggle busting so hard. So prime time doesn't kill me. Land slash ramp doesn't kill me. When swept is actually a hidden trigger, though, so prime time would kill me. And opponent is going to try to race me. All right, so I'm at virtual one right now. What does Bolt do? Currently looking at six damage on the table. I think Bolt is the best card I've seen so far, but I'm still just looking for an Alpine Moon.
pretty much anything an opponent's deck is going to kill me this turn. So this is the last time. What up? <laughs> Opponent knows I have to have one because I just discarded one. <laughs> I can't help it they're touching though. My two alpine moons were hugging. Yep, opponent's going to shoot me here. And then they're top decking to a... I'm not going to put it past them to have destructive revelry, but they're top decking to a bolt, I guess. All right. Uh, I'm just telling an opponent that we're streaming because he had questions about some of the deck choices. So I, I let him know that I'm streaming. Gonna give him one second to respond. So we do currently move up to two one with that one. Uh, that felt like a pretty good win. I don't think we deserve to win it. I assume that Tron and Valica are both horrible matchups, so I probably need to have more than two Alpine Moons in the side. I was really trying to figure out what to go with there because I can technically play Blood Moon in my deck. I have the ability to run Fulminator with K Command to pick it back up and Liliana Last Hope to pick it back up, but that costs a lot of mana and we kind of try to run as efficiently as possible. Uh, or Alpine Moon, and Alpine Moon just costs one mana and it seemed like it made the most sense. So this hand could be just about anything. I'm I'm gonna hang on to it. What are the 50-50 matchups though? Like it's obviously not Hogok, and I'm not saying that just because we got wrecked by it, but I really don't think we have an opportunity to win that one. Like, that's just... That and Dredge. We can't bolt their creatures. I have a lot of lands here. I'm going to try to be conservative with my life total. Ugh. That is disgusting. So, like... What are they? Like, I'm just going to lose to a lot of the degenerate strategies. It's hard for me to interact with Storm unless I put Thali in the list. I don't really think Thali is correct. I'm probably okay versus Phoenix. I actually didn't think that far ahead, but considering Phoenix is another... Are you kidding me? All right, well, they're a blue-red spell deck, so I'm just going to dress here. And I'm actually probably going to escalate. I actually want to flash back this Faithless looting. I'm just going to dress here. All right, so it's Storm again. Uh, Storm means that I need to take the Mana Morphos here since I don't have a way to kill Baral yet. Desperate Ritual is just a card to cast. Repeal's not going to pick up anything that matters for me. So I'll take the Cantrip. Uh, I think if you want to go for 50-50 matchups, you're going to be a little better off with Jund where you get to end up running discard and actually put up a real threat. We're kind of more of a grindy engine. Oh, look at that. I'm so good at this game. And that means I get to go fetch a dual land. Bye-bye. It casts the Reef and the Brawl. But like, I mean, I understand I kept a five lander, but I'm eight of 21 in the top 12. But I've seen a couple of cards that are pivotal to my strategy, but at best here I've got a Lingering Souls putting Storm on probably a six-turn clock. When they're probably just going to deterministically kill me here. Like, this is probably going to be a Desperate Ritual into a... That's an Aria Flame. So, new card from Modern Horizons. Whenever you cast an Incident Sorcery, put a Verse Counter on it. And then ping for equal to the Verse Counters. It's kind of like the Bone Sphinx Wand from a long time ago, but kind of Commander All-Star. 
But like, it's only going to take a couple of spells before that kills me. Whereas if I was Junt here, I probably would have cast a Goyf last turn. I, I mean, I can Young Pyromancer. That's probably a faster clock than Lingering Souls, at least to start off with. Let's me get another dual land. So next turn I can just double Lingering Souls and put up a United Front for a three turn clock. I might be able to steal this one. But like odds are I'm not gonna be able to race this with one one tokens. A Goyf at the moment would be massive. A Goyf would probably be able to kill opponent fast enough. Meanwhile, I'm likely taking six this turn. Cabal Therapist is interesting, but I don't think it really does anything. I'm better off with just Lingering Souls. So I guess I am swinging for eight next turn. I'm putting opponent on a two turn clock from here. They're gonna have to cast around six spells to kill me. It's exponential mass, so it's a little hard to do in my head. Next one's gonna be four and then five, that's nine, then six, that's gonna be 15. They only need to cast four spells, one of which is lowering my clock. one of which is basically free, so I'm taking five off the Aria. Okay, that kind of works. Oh, uh, they're going to empty their hand. Actually, they're just going to kill me here. Oh yeah, that's amazing. Yay, Storm! So, Leyline doesn't really do anything against Arya. Kemball 100% comes in. I don't really think I want a Pithy Needle. Uh, wow, this sideboard was not equipped for Storm considering we're playing it twice. So, we get Kemball. Dreadbore comes out easily. I originally had the other two Collective Brutalities in the side for Burn. They're probably supposed to stay in here for this matchup. Stony's not going to do anything. Pithy Needle's not. Uh, Wear Tear actually might make a heroic appearance, though, because Wear Tear is going to be able to destroy both Pyromancer's Ascension and Aria of Flame. So that's probably just cutting down on a Bedlam Reveler. And I honestly think Season Pyromancer is just a bad Bedlam Reveler. This is easier to cast under Graveyard Hate, so I could potentially see something like having these in the board and then swapping out a number for a number, but. Yeah, I have not been impressed with Season Pyromancer yet. We would like to play first. All right, so we have Faithless Looting on one, Bolt for the Dark on two. We have K Command, although I don't really think it does anything productive this early. We have four land drops of our 21 lands. This is probably fine. Uh, I do think this deck was also supposed to have 20 lands. I think 21 might be some overkill here. As much as I think that it'd be awesome to not ever get mana screwed, this deck is just supposed to function by casting one to two spells a turn, and if it's two spells, it's, hey, look at that. Uh, I actually think I want the K command to pick up Kemball. So I'm expecting a tap land next turn, bolt the dork, untap Kemball, and then K command pick up Kemball, and Kemball with preferably bolt up. So... Yeah, sorry, PZ, but you're going away. You're just not needed here.
The number of times I've discarded lands to faithless looting makes me think that, that was a bad decision to add an additional one. Bedlam Reveler's not bad. Uh, the way that I left this up make, has to make them think I have bolt or push, but they're also not really in a position that they can just skip a mana dork if they have it. Well, it is possible that they have remand here, so I'm probably going to lead on Lingering Souls. Kimball is a blowout, but I'd rather not get that remanded. This is a little bit better to remand or counter. Okay. I am A-OK -okay with that. Two cards, one of which is your finisher to get rid of part of a Lingering Souls. Oh, that Brutality looks delicious. Although, I don't think I can use it. As long as they're tapped out, Kimball has to come down. Then that means that they have to either have the Bolt in their hand that they leave in there as a Gifts target, or they have to do some wacky shenanigans with the grape shot and passed in flames. Ooh, that's that's a good one too. So duress first, clear the way. All right, well, K-Command's going to pick it back up. Pieces of the puzzle, gifts. Wow, they have another bolt. All right, well, gifts can set them up for their win, so I think I have to take the gifts here. Pieces of the puzzle is pretty decent card advantage, and Bolt's going to kill Kemball the next time he comes around, but, I mean, gifts just, it's basically four cards, so that has to go away. Can't believe they had two bolts, though. Okay, so they get two spells. They put Serum Visions and Echoing Truth into their hand. Bloodstained Mire, so I think I have to K command here. I'm not very excited about it, and I know opponent has no interaction at the moment. K command, pick up Kemball, don't do anything else. Alternatively, flashback Faithless Looting. How much does Bedlam Reveler cost right now? So, one, two, three, four less. I could technically Bedlam Reveler here. Uh, I think my best plan is make them discard one of their cards in their hand. Any of these in the yard are fine. Pick up my chem ball, then they're going to have to keep Bolt around. Although I need to tap correctly. Then I can get any color I need to with the Bloodstain Mark. And odds are that if they are, yeah, I can just blow it up with a white source. They drew into a Metamorphose, and it was already worth recycling, apparently. Their hand doesn't look like it can go off. And they. I, I'm so confused. Serum Vision's down. Maybe they're just trying to go off now because of the threat of Kimball. Don't need any more white. Definitely need more red. I 
Okay, that that's kind of nice. I'll never be mad at having an additional lightning bolt up. Although a sacred foundry there would have meant that I can actively... I actually don't need to bold in response to that. Would have meant that I could leave up uh, terror with lightning bolt. I, I don't think that's correct though. I needed the red sources and it doesn't hurt to have additional black. Okay. So they double splice that. So they should have one left. There's the past in flames. So they have the grape shot. I'm just going to F6. Odds are we're dead. Just free firing bolts at our face at this point. <laughs> okay. So, do you have another grape shot in hand? Wow. All right. Really don't know what to say about that one. So, we move to the 2 2 bracket. I really don't want to be king of the 2 3 bracket with a legitimate deck, but it looks like that's where we're headed. Uh,. Really surprised we beat Valakut. Uh, Storm, I think, beat us in this game, too. Pretty sure that was that game. Uh, Helix, Lingering Souls, and Castable Bedlam Reveler. Uh, we can do better than this. Uh, Helix on two is in a very good way to end a game, and this Bedlam Reveler basically makes us a six-card hand. This is a little bit more my speed. So this is going to be a turn one Inquisition, turn two Pyromancer, or potentially Therapist with a tap land, depending on what matchup this is. Wow, I put it one to five, so expecting Tron or Dredge. A basic land is okay. Island. All right. So mold a five with an island means a really awkward start for some decks. It's likely Merfolk in this instance. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's Infect. We can deal with Infect. What force of negation down? Uh, in fact, does mean that I need to get a clock out, which means Young Pyromancer is coming down next. And then Young Pyromancer should be able to help set up for lethal with the Cabal Therapist. This is one of our heavily skewed to be favored matchups. That is a spreading seas. So maybe still Merfolk? Mutavault could double as a Merfolk and Waterlog Grove could be a redraw. Yeah, I don't know what to make of that. So I know opponent has a force of negation. Uh, I think that just means I'm setting up for Cabal Therapist the best way possible, which is going to be a Sacred Foundry, Untapped, Faithful Saluting, see if they want a Force of Negation it. I'm doing all this before the Cabal Therapist, so we can't get... give them the advantage of knowing we're going to pick apart the Force of Negation. So I've seen two Force of Negations and these lands. All right, they did Force of Negation revealing Silvergill. So this is Merfolk. Uh, which means I get to pick apart the Silvergill Adept. 
I did see the spreading seas, which is what made me think it was merfolk. Uh, they mold to five and cat two force of ne negations and a couple of lands. Alright, so they're going to have to run out the silver gill here, otherwise I'm just going to therapist it away. Okay. Sorry, opponent, you're going to... Oh, sorry, they exiled that with force of negation. Makes sense. Yeah, not sacking a creature. That Inquisition is awful, so I can Lingering Souls, alternatively just Dreadbore and get in for a decent chunk of damage. Dreadbore will give me a blocker for one of the Muta Vaults. Are, are they actually winning this race right now? So I'm hitting for four, they're hitting for four. If I can't attack in with PZ though, then yeah, I think I'm losing this race. Which means I'm going to be on Lingering Souls. Them looting doesn't feel that important. They're actually probably going to have to cycle this at some point. Dreadboring a Biomancer just feels absolutely ridiculous, though. Uh, any Lord is going to make it so that they have Island Walk and buff everything, so I think I need to save Dreadbore for that, so I just talked myself into Lingering Souls. Wow, and that gets exiled? That's pretty decent. Uh, I am also very far ahead on board right now. Do I actually want to attack in with PZ? If I trade for Biomancer, I think I'm still ahead. I think I'll give him a turn to Lord, because odds are they're going to use a Muta Vault to sack the Waterlog Grove this turn. Menace is oddly relevant here. In the near future, I see myself firing off an Inquisition just to get a token. So they're planning on evolving? Whatever, I'll take two. I'm fine taking two. So they have a bad card in hand. That's the read I'm getting. Then this means that I can Inquisition, just basically fact check. If they evolve and loot, in, they won't evolve in response because then they'll just discard a good card. So they have Deprive? Nope, they're adapting. Discarded the Silver Gill, which draws a card. This must be a land? Nope, a Trickster. Okay, so that's fine. Nothing I'm actually concerned about yet. Uh, then that means I am going to cash in this Lingering Souls and then cash in... Oh, nope, can't do that. That costs black from the yard. I know better than that. Um, actually, if they have literally nothing going on, I think that means I'm on Shock and Dreadbore. Just because I won't die from any backswing and then... I should have lethal the following turn. I really don't like committing resources into terrible plays, but if that's how you've got to win, that's how you've got to win.
Found another Biomancer, draw off the Waterlog Grove. Either that or just Chump Block. I guess both are acceptable. That's fine. I'm never sad when I top deck a bolt. Yep, yep, yep. Fall Therapist has Menace for some reason. Another reason I felt like it was a pretty decent card. This will give me a blocker as well as just straight up kill opponent. Alright, so that was closer than I wanted it to be considering they multiply with no creatures. And I don't really have any sideboard for this. So Pithy Needle can come in. It can name Mutavault. It can name Aether Vial. It can name Benthic Biomancer. It can name Waterlog Grove. Um, I honestly don't think that's worth diluting my strategy. Opponents likely bringing in Relic. Relic would probably be my best guess. Uh, they also look to be a kind of spell heavy one. I don't think Kemble's really worth it. It. A single lord, he can't block anymore, he can't attack. Three mana is just asking a whole lot for that. I think I want to do one for one removals with their creatures and then just come out on top after grinding. So it would be nice if they didn't get spreading season go unblockable, but I think I have enough going for my strategy that we're okay. This matchup is probably a reason to have a damnation in the side, though. That and humans and probably slivers these days, but... I think Pithy Needle's just overboarding. It's going to dilute from our strategy, and we have plenty of options for things that can do things. Uh, Kolagon's Command can also potentially grab their Graveyard Hate. I would assume that they have... They don't have Graph Digger's Cage showing us the green means that they probably have Collected Company. Collected Company on your opponent's end step, protecting it with Force of Negation is actually kind of cute. All right, I don't have red mana. That's a pretty easy mulligan. Uh, this has no filter, <laughs> but it has a lot of removal. So opponent mold to six as well. I actually think I can stay on top of this. Oh, opponent's taking the draw? That is so awkward. Alright, so odds are they're not going to have a turn one Merfolk. If they do, it's going to be Biomancer, and I can let that stick around for a turn. So I'm going to top the land and run out Marsh Flats, but not crack it. Opponent put a card to the bottom. Giving the discard deck the play seems like such a bad idea. So I can run out Cabal Therapist here. Opponent won't be able to spell pierce it. I put a Plains in expecting to get Field of Ruined more than once, and that was probably a mistake. Again, I think I messed with the mana base too much. Going up to 21 lands just does not feel right. Uh, I think I'm going to Cabal Therapist here. I don't believe I actually can name anything like I can try to say force of negation but unless I collected brutality first I don't think I can do it collected brutality should be able to snag any of their two drops that's fair we are a fair matchup you're not supposed to keep force of will in fair matchups But it looks like they have a lord, but can't blue-blue it. 
There's a Silvergill. Okay, so I get a name Lord of Atlantis, and then I get to see if I can collect a Brutality them or not. This might be loose. I, I'm fully expecting to see like two Master of the Pearl Tridents in here. But I don't want them having Lords. Oh, I actually probably need to name Spreading Seas. No, if they had Spreading Seas, they would have cast it. Wow. And there's the Force of Negation and the Deprive. All right. 13, you're making all kinds of mistakes tonight. So I get to... Collective Brutality. They will Force of Negation it, more than likely. If I try to two mode it. So I just duress, take the force of negation. The force of negation is a two for one, and that's exactly what I want to be doing in this deck. So I actually think I'm taking the deprive here. And then I'm probably cutting the, or bolting the silver gill. Just because they won't have a clock until Master, and Master's not coming down until later. They are going to be able to cut me off of black, but I have to make some concessions here. They got rid of the spreading seas. You're good, opponent. You're so good. I mean, I guess I can't kill the Master. They're going to hold up Deprive for the first thing I try to cast, but... Don't need to kill the master when you can just discard it. <laughs> I mean, they're going to deprive it, but I mean, that still turns on like everything else in our deck. <laughs> All right, so there's the island. They have a fresh draw and a master. I mean, K-Command right now would just be fantastic. Okay, deck, off the top. K-Command, I can fill it in my jellies. It's not a K-Command. All right, well, Master coming down and creating one token is not very good for them. Loot it away. You've made some really questionable decisions, opponent. Loot it away. All right. So, I would love a Lingering Souls. <laughs> okay. Um, sure. All over that. Uh, I still have another Collective Brutality to draw into. Of course, Inquisition can't hit it. Uh, so they didn't make a land drop, which means that this is something that they could potentially cast, so I'm definitely trying. I, I, does anybody understand what's going on? Because I don't understand what's going on. I, uh, uh, if, if somebody's not following along, they had the other spreading seas, so they've used... They've had the opportunity to do three spreading seas. And they've left my black, which is pretty much one of my primary colors. If not the primary, it's close to... It's secondary, but close to primary. They spreading seas my white source. They let me discard this other spreading seas. They haven't popped the relic when it's pretty... Oh, I guess I can't cast that lightning helix. But if I look at my list, I have two Lightning Helixes. I guess I wouldn't be able to cast the Lingering Souls. Versus, like, Collective Brutality, Inquisition, the Therapist. I don't know. This deck originally didn't even have a Planes in it.
That's a card. Okay, so opponent has a relic here. I get to cast this Lingering Souls from the yard while holding priority, and this can block a Master of Waves as well as all of its tokens. So I'm inclined to keep the Dreadbore in case I find a Lord. The Lightning Helix isn't castable, but any fetch land turns that on. I'm going to be discarding the Lingering Souls and uh, probably the Helix. I really like the instant speed, and the life game feels relevant when they've been trying to do Mutavolt beatdown. But being able to cast the Lingering Souls here just feels way too good. And that's going to leave up Bolt if they try to attack with the Mutavolt. They're probably going to Force of Negation this the way that the game's been going. Okay, they didn't. Okay, that was probably a correct call. That meant that I couldn't flash back the Faith Saluting. That is a Master of the Pearl Trident. That's one dead Mita Vault. Nope. Uh, I misplayed. Now they can tap it for mana. It's likely not relevant, but it's terrible form. Uh, then... This is where we want to be at, so potentially Force of Negation coming, but I love everything that just happened here. This is fine. Not sarcastically everything's on fire, but this is fine. Opponent gave me too many opportunities to use my Black Source, considering the fact they had three Spreading Seas. I don't know why they pitched one, why they let the other one sit in hand when I'm a discard deck, but... They get to do them. Uh, I know about a Master of Waves in hand that's uncastable. Ooh, they're going to show us the green? Dismember. <laughs> I mean, they had to. Waterlog Grove. All right, so removal for that would be nice. Or the card that they just dismembered is also probably acceptable. Uh, Merfolks are currently getting an unblock, though, which is a problem. So, Bolt would be great. Yeah, but Master of Waves makes three tokens, and I have an active young Pyromancer, and they're going to take two damage to cast it. I don't know how good this is for them. I mean, I guess it depends on what I top deck, but... Well, that's a white source. So they get to swing in for a lot of damage, but I can trade off an elemental token with one of them. They can't swing in with the Lord, so I'm probably looking at taking six here. How do they have lethal? They have exactly 13 damage, but I can block all five of these. Yeah, so I'm going to put Sacred Foundry out as a white source. I understand I should hold on to it for Faithless Looting, but a Lightning Helix is very live here. Then I think I'm willing to trade off two of the Elemental Spirit Tokens for the Master of Waves, which means they can't swing in with the Master, otherwise the Young Peasy blocks it. And Elemental's trading with one Elemental. And honestly, I don't think I even need to keep the spirit tokens around for the master. Like, preventing this much damage over multiple turns is going to keep me in this. So I'll take two here. And if I draw into anything, I get another elemental token for their elemental token. They still can't attack in with this master. This one will be able to get in for three, but I have so many good top decks, and they're basically cycling lands. I guess they are technically ahead on this board state, but... Like, a Lingering Souls is super live. Even with that, a Lingering Souls is super live. They should be cashing that in. Bedlam Revelers live. Season Pyromancer's kind of live. Well, that'll draw me two cars, so it's very live. Yeah, they're supposed to cash that in. 
that's probably taking something, but I mean, that gives me something to block their elemental token. I'm only taking three this turn. Unless they draw into another lord. Uh, I guess the Mute Vault can get in. So I'm on a two turn clock. That is relevant. Oh yeah, and that's an elemental. Okay, something good. Bolt. What does Bolt do? So Pyromancer's not blocking here. I'll happily trade it for the Lord. Yep. Bolt means I get a kill of the Master of the Pearl Trident. I get a blocker for the Muta Vault. I'll take three, and then I get to untap and do some shenanigans. Uh, opponent is running main deck Force of Negation as well as Deprive, so I'm not excited about this going down, but odds are I wasn't going to survive anyway if they had one of those. Uh, this turns Lightning Helix on as an out. This turns on Season Pyromancer. I think Bedlam Reveler is still castable with a Bolt to follow up with it. A Thassa. All right, well, that also shut off Thassa. That's not going to do it. All right, go to game three. Yeah, I had a lot of good cards to draw into there. I just didn't quite get there. Uh, so... Opponent is actually on the Lord plan. They did show us a couple of tricksters to start off with, but they kept all their counter spells in. They kept all their spreading season. I really don't think Kimball's worth bringing in. I wish I had a better sideboard for this matchup, but I honestly think it'd just be Damnation or Anger of the Gods. Yeah, whatever. We can run it back. Love to play first. So this is a turn one faithful saluting, been a lingering souls and something else. Hey Serifix, I love that standard. Mono blue is fantastic. Shore Crasher Elemental? Mmm, that was delicious. Um Yeah, this is fine. Like none of this is amazing, but they're all good cards. Cabal Therapist with Lingering Souls is gonna just chunk their hand. And uh, I'll give them a good linger, a uh, good spreading seas target to start off with because apparently they're running all four and like to fire off haphazardly. Oh, we even got the young peasy. All right, so I guess it's just going to be the arid mesa. It's the least relevant land. Then this means next turn is young pyromancer. We can lightning helix with cabal therapist up. And I'm okay if any of these lands get Spreading Seas next turn. I'm not really excited about something else. Uh, spreading Seas will shut off my plan of Lightning Helix with Cabal Therapist, but it means that I can just revert back to Lingering Souls with Cabal Therapist. Yeah, that's all you, opponent. Silvergill revealing a lord. All right. So Cabal Therapist, Lightning Helix. I'm just trying to take into account anything else I could be doing here. So Lingering Souls is kind of interesting, but that would be Lingering Souls and Faithless Looting. I really don't think that's going to benefit my game plan at all. Lightning Helix can take out the Lord if they try to run him out pre-combat. Uh, if they have Force of Negation, I'll still have a 1-1 to block. 
Force of Negation also means I probably need to counter during their, or kill during their upkeep. I'm doing so much damage to myself. I think I need to figure out if they're running out the Lord or not. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, do I want to kill anything in response? No. I'm willing to see if they attack in first. I'm very clearly representing something. They should not be attacking. They win this game by attacking, but they don't have Island Walk at the moment. Uh, so Silvergill has already done its damage for card advantage. Benthic Biomancer can do looting, so I'm going to target that first. Uh, they also gave me the advantage of seeing the Master of the Pearl Trident, which means that I get to Cabal Therapist them and actually see their whole hand. Oh, I get two Therapists? That is amazing! Yeah, I said Sack. Target you. And we are doing Master of the Pearl Trident. Okay, so they have two Tricksters. And another Spreading Seas. And a Deprive. So... Oddly enough, I think that means I'm hanging on to this Faithless Looting for the time being. Or, sorry, the Marsh Flats for the time being. So, let's go ahead and generate a token. Give me a little fuel for next time around. As much as I want a double Cabal Therapist, I don't think I can actually do it. Yeah, all right. Well, let's get another young Peasy out there. Let them think that they can spreading seize my Sacred Foundry, and then I can March Flats. So everything that they have currently costs two. Cabal Therapist is getting in for free. Yay, Menace. Wow, I have fallen very far behind on clock. My apologies, opponent. I didn't realize I was taking that long. Yeah, whatever. You go. Uh, so, depending on what opponent does next turn, I'm probably running out my land for turn, and then probably running back Faithless Looting, unless I draw something absolutely bananas. Uh, I want them to feel like they have to counter it, holding up the Deprive. Yep, so they're supposed to trickster the Cabal Therapist here so that I don't get the upkeep trigger. Good play. <laughs> I got another Pyromancer. <laughs> All right, so they actually can't counter me right now. So I can young out, run out Pyromancer. A Lord's going to make it really hard for me to do anything. They're going to trick screen next turn, which means I still won't have the Therapist up. I can't attack in unless I'm willing to trade off my PZs. I think I'm flashing back Faithless Looting regardless, because that gives me the most tokens and also lets me craft my hand. If I end up finding something like a Bedlam Reveler, it's just going to restock and get me pretty far ahead. Oh boy. So, been a PZ, been a Marsh Flats. Run out the Arid Mesa so that they know they can't spread in seas here. They're probably going to run back the Trickster play, so my land was probably safe. And then this is going to be Bolt of Lord if they try to set up for one. If not, actually, I can Bolt Trickster here, get in. No, I can't get in. But if I have to Bolt, I can do it. But in the meantime, it's protected from spreading seas. Trickster being a 2-2 is kind of frustrating. I'm 
Gonna have to figure out how to clear two of them away before my elementals actually start getting in for something. I do know three of the four cards in my opponent's hand, though. But I'm getting attrition every turn that passes. I feel like I am ahead here. Perfectly acceptable. Take one damage. Make it so I can't discard your spreading seas. I am perfectly okay with another bolt. So what does another bolt do? I can double bolt, get four tokens, swing in. They're probably going to have to block one. I'll have six tokens and two pyromancers. Versus my opponent who's holding not much. They can block with the Muta Vaults. Do I care about the Mutavault? Because I can bolt the Mutavault. But that means it's one less pointed at the Trickster. I still think I'm just getting a lot more out of every draw than my opponent is. So I think I'm just going to flash back this Lingering Souls. Uh, it's going to require black, and I don't want to expose black to a... Oh boy. Faithless Looting at this point could potentially draw me into a Bedlam Reveler and make me discard a Bolt. I'll give it one more turn. That's going to make it so that their deprives up, but I'm not... I, I'm okay just slowly grinding out what they're doing here. They've also drawn a lot of lands, like a whole lot of lands. Odds are one of these deprives are pointed at a lightning bolt at a lord. Now I actually get to start Cabal Therapy, so... Yes. Uh, opponent does have enough mana to start multicasting, though. I suppose this means a Trickster is going down. Kind of wishing I had two therapists out on the field now. <laughs> they got another trickster. <laughs> I I don't even have words at this point. So faithless looting, bend the lingering souls, find a land, get a bunch of tokens. Uh, that's gonna require. Oh, the painful mana. All right. Uh, I think I'm on Faithful Sleeping just to find another colored source. So Blood Crypt is going to be black. I need white and black. I already have my Godly Shrine out. There's no way I'm cutting black at this point. So I'll just flash back the Lingering Souls should I need it. Faithless Looting. All right, Dreadboard and Mountain. Mountain is a color. Uh, Bolt is better than Dreadboard. Make my land drop. And I am getting so far ahead, but with only a single Bolt of Interaction, I don't think I can commit yet. Attack. Okay, they probably should have waited until they actually had to prive up. This is their turn. Force of Negation's not online. And this should be the blowout turn. Echoing Truth on all my tokens. Perfectly acceptable. They should have waited for my actual ones to resolve. Then that means block here. And eh, I don't need to fog the four damage. Oh, look at that Bedlam Reveler. That is fantastic. All right, so we're going to take away your Deprive. <laughs> All right, uh, then 
this is going to be a free Bedlam Reveler. Oh, with bolts and brutalities and inquisitions. I'm a fan of all of that. I'm going to set a draw step stop for myself in case I actually want to Cabal Therapist them. I can bolt and get a summoning sick token. Odds are I'm going to try to kill something here, though. Like a Lord of Atlantis. Yep, that's the game. All right, so went 3-2 with Marty Pyromancer. I was expecting to do a little bit better. Uh, I think that the Cabal Therapist is probably not right for modern after this. So it did perform pretty well. Uh, it actually did a fantastic job keeping some of our opponents at bay. When we grabbed two scape shifts out of our Valakut opponent, like it just did fantastic. Uh, our Merfolk opponent there was respecting it so hard that they ended up Merfolk trickstering it three times in a row in order to try to get it's that I don't just remove their counter spells or spreading seas. Like it really put them off tempo, but I don't have enough pressure to actually punish them for needing to interact with it. Uh, modern is a very explosive format. I think we lost against both uh, storm matchups, which makes sense. Like without Thali in the list somewhere, it's just a little hard to actually pretend like I'm going to interact with a spell based combo. Uh, I should be able to just double check this. Oh, yeah, my overlay's still up. Uh, so I did really like the deck. Marty Pyromancer's a fun one. I do think Green Black is definitely in a better position. Okay, so this was actually Hogok. So we lost to Hogok and Storm, but we did beat Storm once. Um, yeah, I, I love Lily. Liliana of the Vell, Liliana Last Hope. I ended up basically making the cut of Liliana of the Vell for the Cabal Therapist. I don't think that's correct. Liliana of the Vell is a threat of her own. She actually removes creatures. Cabal Therapist requires you to have an engine in order to continuously discard. You get a target to discard, but Lily's going to forcibly make them discard, and you're perfectly okay discarding with your deck. You get to remove any of the threats where we had some problems with that. Like It's just the card value. We end up discarding a lot. A lot of our two-for-ones require some setup. Uh, I don't believe the 21 lands was correct. I mentioned that before. Like, it just... The number of lands I had to discard and the number I saw was just appalling. Uh, I do like the deck, though. I mean, Marty Pyromancer's real. It's kind of fringe, but it's real. Uh, yeah, I think that's about all to say there. So... Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, feel free to check out Squirrel Dealer. We have a ton of fun jank decks and all that fun stuff. Like, subscribe. Yay! And uh, I will see you all later.